Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Berkeley County Board of Education meeting this Tuesday, August the 25th, 2015. I call this meeting to order. I declare a quorum is present and the media has been notified. At this time, do I have approval of the agenda? So moved. Second. I have a motion to approve the agenda and it's been seconded. Any discussion? Then all of those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Moving on to agenda item three, please stand for the opening prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Do I have a motion to approve the amendments for the special meetings on August the 4th, 5th, and 6th, and the regular meeting of August the 11th, 2015? Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the minutes for the special meetings for August the 4th, August the 5th, and August the 6th, as well as the regular meeting on August the 11th. I second. So we have a motion to approve the special meetings of August 4th, 5th, and 6th, and the regular meeting of August the 11th, 2015, and it has been seconded. Any discussion? Then all of those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Approved, same sign. Then the minutes are approved. Moving on to agenda item five, the approval of the July 2015 Head Start budget expenditures report, July 2015 Head Start credit card report, and the prospective new hires. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we approve the July 2015 Head Start budget expenditures report, July 2015 Head Start credit card report, and prospective new hires as presented in agenda item five. Second. And we have a motion to approve the July 2015 Head Start budget expenditures report, the July 2015 Head Start credit card report, and the prospective new hires as, as presented in agenda item five. It has been seconded. Do I have any discussion? Then at this time, all of those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And that motion carries 8-0. Uh, Moving on to agenda item six at this time, Ms. Amy Murray. Legacy Builders, special recognition. Good evening, Mr. Chair, Dr. Turner, members of the board, and all of you who have joined us tonight. Uh, we have two recognitions for you tonight, and at this time I would like to um, invite Mr. Charlie Davis up to the mic to make those recognitions. Mr. Hayes, Dr. Turner, once again, it's a great pleasure and honor to be able to present to y'all tonight, uh, first of all, Coach John Chalice. Uh, John, if you would just come up and just stand right back here while I share some information with the board and, and our guests tonight. A selection in the Hall of Fame is a special, special recognition the Charleston Baseball Hall of Fame class of 2015. John is one of three recipients in that class of 2015. Please allow me to read a few things about how this accomplishment took place. 
In 23 years at, as head coach at Stratford High School, he compiled a record of 463 and 192. I'm gonna have to get my glasses out, excuse me. Uh, 463 and 192, I, would, I didn't know whether I was reading that right or not. <laughs> Uh, he led Stratford to Class 4A state championships in 1996 and 2005. Twelve of Coach Chalice's play players were drafted by Major League Baseball. Two of those players are currently playing in the Major Leagues right now. Matt Wieters with the Baltimore Orioles and Justin Smoke with the Toronto Blue Jays. He was honored as the Region Coach of the Year six different times, Low Country Coach of the Year five times, and gave all the credit to parents, players, and people that supported him. He was inducted on August 8th before a Charleston River Dogs baseball game. It is with great pleasure I present to you not tonight Coach John Chalice, Class of 2015 Charleston Baseball Hall of Fame. Dan Davis, uh, assistant or excuse me, Dan Davidson, assistant principal at Stratford High School. D Dan, if you'd come up also, Amy, if you could hang on just a second. To be part of the Photoshop. And while Dan's coming, I have to tell you something else about John. My granddaughter graduated from Stratford this past year and she's going to the College of Charleston. Not only was John great teacher on the baseball field. My granddaughter tells me it, he's the best AP history teacher she's ever had. Here, here. <laughs> it's also with great pleasure that I, we have another recognition tonight. There was a track meet earlier this summer, I think June 19th, uh, in Greensboro, New Balance National Championship track and field meet. A Stratford High student in the, that was running in the ninth grade division, uh, Devante Fuller from Stratford High School. His coaches, Tuan Williams and Shane Sutherland, are here tonight with him. His family, uh, parents, are here with him as well as his little sister, I see back there. He is the national champion 400 meter uh, freshman division champion. I can't say enough about somebody being a state champion, but when you become a national champion, that is once again something really rare and really special. He's also a football player that will be playing for Stratford on Friday night. Uh, the uh, wonderful thing that I'm so proud of tonight is this. Aside from being national champion and having that kind of talent, when you match high character with that kind of talent, you have something special. The character issue came forth when we had the tragedy of the Emmanuel Nine back in June. 
and Devante dedicated that race prior to the national championship run, that race to the coach at Goose Creek High School who was tragically killed in that uh, tragedy. He wore a black and gold uh, ribbon to represent for that family and to recognize and honor that family. You don't know how special that is uh, until you realize what kind of rivalry it is between Goose Creek and St <laughs> Stratford. So uh, that is why I say not only does he have great talent, but he has great character to match that. Devante, if you would come up, please, sir. Coach Sutherland, Coach Williams, Coach Chalice, and Mr. Davidson again for a photo of Andrea and Charlie, if y'all would stand, the parents of Devante. <laughs> Thank you very much. And that concludes our special recognitions for this evening. Thank you very much. Moving on to agenda item number seven, citizens' comments. In order to conduct the meeting in an orderly and efficient manner, we ask that you honor the following guidelines. Stakeholder comments are welcomed and encouraged. However, the board will not take immediate action or public comments at this meeting. Any person wishing to address the board must register prior to the meeting. Comments must be regarding programs, policies, uh, pr and, and, or procedures. Comments regarding complaints against employees other than district level executives or reference to students other than the child of the speaker, speaker will not be heard in public session. Groups addressing the same topic should select one speaker. Comments will be limited to three minutes per speaker. The board chair reserves the right to allot additional time or to halt public comments that do not adhere to the guidelines. At this time, Ms. Kathy Mack Watson wants to talk to us about Philip Simmons Schools. Good evening, Ms. Mack. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening, Chairman Hayes, Dr. Turner, and board members. My name is Kathy Mack Watson. I'm here to speak on the subject of the new Philip Simmons School. We have formed a very strong and united PTA board for which I serve as the vice president of membership. We have been supported by parents and by the school board representative and a PTA member, Mac McQuillan. He and the South Carolina PTA made sure that we were in line with the board policies and PTA policies. As the grandniece of Philip Simmons, I know that he loved the children of Berkeley County Schools. 
He spent a lot of time in the classrooms and career days at Kane Hoy, Boulder Bluff, College Park, and many more schools. Philip Simmons grew up in the community, and I know that he would want the community and students to be a part in naming the mascot, the mascot in his honor. It would be an honor and a pleasure to serve on the selection committee, along with our president, the other PTA board members, and the Philip Simmons Foundation and students. The mascot will be an important part of our fundraising efforts. We have begun fundraising with Harris Teeter and public rewards cards. We are in the process of gathering information on brick sales and corporate sponsors to help fund the school's playground, playground equipment as well as the $250 grants for each teacher. Thank you for this opportunity to speak and we look forward to working with the board as part of the Philip Simmons School. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Mack. I want to I want to recognize the members. This is the whole. This this is every officer on the Philip Simmons PTA board. Is that right? And this is a PTA that was formed before the school even opened its doors. So we ought to give these people a big round of applause. And I want to. So the the president is Shauna Bearden or Burden, excuse me. The vice president of resource development is Lisa Kearns. The vice president of membership is Miss Watson that just spoke. Um, we have Donna Libert, who's the Vice President of Leadership Development. The Secretary is Kim Wright. Vice President of Programs is Heidi, and I'm going to butcher your name, I think, <laughs> says, says Janop. Close? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the Treasurer is Natalie Wright, and I see the Gutierrez family behind you, too. I appreciate y'all coming out tonight to support the school. And, and Rob, thank you. Ms. Mack, before you all sit down, I, I want to make sure that the board heard the message that you delivered tonight, and that is that time is of the essence. You need a mascot so that you can begin your fundraising. I would ask the superintendent, Dr. Turner, this would be his responsibility, obviously, uh, to Dr. Turner, if you would take it from this point and, and get in contact with these folks. Uh, any assistance you could give them to, so that they can begin early with fundraising. Uh, it sounds like you need a mascot. Thank you all for stepping forward. Dr. Turner will be getting in touch with you. Thank you very much. I'll be more than happy to, Dr. Murray. I, I guess I better ask that question, right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't care any way to wrap <laughs> Other than what's right here. <laughs> Thank uh, you, Dr. We, we never blunt enthusiasm, I can there tell you. There you go. I agree. I agree. Next to the uh, podium will be Mr. Raymond Brown to inform and to promote the concept of distributive practice and distributive instruction in the Berkeley County Schools. Uh, good evening, uh, Dr. Hayes, Dr. Turner, and board members. Uh, please forgive my voice tonight. It's uh, in the process of uh, fading, and so if it fades out, don't be too surprised. Um, what I'm wanting to do tonight is to promote something called distributed practice and distributed instruction or guidance. Now, Dr. O'Gorman has already included a certain amount of this in uh, the curriculum that has been written in the county. I hope that what he has done is, uh, in my opinion, sufficient. It would be my great pleasure to compliment um, him on doing so. Um, I do intend to look at a lot of the curriculum that's been written. Um, I've talked to the district about a FOIA agreement to get the information, and I plan to do that uh, quite shortly. Now, what we're talking about with distributed practice and distributed instruction is a program that improves learning of students up to about 900%, okay? 900% was accomplished by a lady named Katie Tolley at uh, Drayton Hall Middle School in Charleston County. Uh, her, um, I won't call her a partner, but one of the ladies that taught with her uh, had uh, similar results for algebra students. And this is a basic skills program that I wrote for algebra students that were preparing for BSAP. Whereas uh, the year before, one person had a perfect score 
after uh, Tricia Britt used the material. Um, there were nine children that had perfect scores on BSAP. What we're talking about here, um, in the case of um, a 900% increase, we're talking about um, a, a program that um, would raise the uh, percentiles by about 35 percentile. If you know anything about education in this country in the last, I don't know how many years, I understand it may be 50 or 75 years, the increase in achievement has only been between zero and one percent. I read this somewhere just recently. If I'm mistaken in anything that I say this evening, I'd be happy for you to correct me either, either during this time or after the meeting. Um, besides a 900% increase, and by the way, for the amount of time used in class, we're talking about a 2,700% increase. Uh, in other words, it was recommended that the class only be uh, uh, used about a third for this particular act activity. Besides uh, improvement in the uh, achievement, also there were improvements, and I have a handout that I'll give you to show you the, the improvements in Berkeley County. Uh, there were improvements in uh, student discipline, improvements in uh, motivation, in feelings of success, and in, uh, from that uh, self-esteem. Um, it is not just a math program. It is a program that deals with every different academic subject and also uh, in athletics. Uh, I understand my time is about up. Let me just uh, make a concluding remark. Um, the public school districts in this country are against anything that brings very high achievement. Um, this is why the United States or America is last place in the world in education. And so in, in the future, I'll be coming hopefully with a better voice to uh, inform you about many different things. And uh, at this time, I want to thank you for um, listening to me. And I hope that you take this uh, seriously. I have the ability now to go on television anytime I want. I recently went on television, and uh, you can, uh, on one of my websites entitled iemalpractice.com, you can find uh, that television appearance and any other appearance that, I'm, that I make uh, on these topics. Um, any questions? Thank you, Mr. Brown. Next at the uh, podium will be Mr. Terry Hardesty, who wants to talk about attorney fees and board comments. Good evening, Chairman Hayes, members of the board, Dr. Turner. Uh, in case you've been living on the moon, you're probably aware of the Judge Jeffrey Young ruled against removing the Attorney General uh, and his entire office as prosecutor in the case of the Berkeley County School District employees that are under indictment and investigation. You may not be aware, however, that a key component in that ruling revolves around your decision to pay attorney's fees for employees. The letter from Chief Deputy John McIntosh stating the district should not be paying criminal defense attorney fees, which you received earlier, was upheld as a long-standing position of the Attorney General's office and was not any kind of basis to remove the AG's office. I know you hold the position you have an obligation to defend employees 
who may be sued or criminally charged if they're working in the capacity of their employment and I think that's both proper and honorable. However, there is no scope of work district employees do that is both uh, that as educators or administrators that are violations of state law, especially ethics laws as they are the fundamental tenet of why and what <coughs> we should be teaching our students. Further, the board paid McNair Law Firm to explicitly spell out what was and was not legal activity and several employees appear to have blatantly ignored that warning. I think this ruling dispels the notion this case has been nothing but a witch hunt. This board has repeatedly asserted you would not make comments on this case. You may want to reiterate that to your new board chairman as it appears he has signed and commented in an online petition asking the Attorney General to dismiss the prosecution of both current and former district employees. Mr. Hayes, if you did not say this, and I apologize in advance, but I take profound exception to what I believe is your comment on the change.org petition where you state, I am a taxpayer and the Attorney General has wasted enough money on this to add a wing on a school. Yes, $690,000 is a lot of money, but that money was spent by this board, not the Attorney General. And I submit that is not only immoral, it's illegal. The Attorney General is sworn by oath to uphold the laws of this state. And if I'm not mistaken, it's the same oath that each and every one of you took when you were sworn in. Thank you. Next to the podium will be Mr. Gary Smoke, who wants to talk to us about Macedonia Middle. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the board. I am glad to follow up behind this gentleman that just spoke because I am a taxpayer of Berkeley County. I also, my wife and I have a couple of businesses here in Monk's Corner. I have 10 grandchildren. I have nine in Berkeley County schools. Well, my 11-year-old, the very first day of school, 11-year-old grandson, wants an answer to this question. And the question is, why couldn't he get a mustard pack? And the reason I'm bringing this up is he brought his lunch the very first day of school, bought a milk, and then went back up and asked for a mustard pack and they would not give it to him. They said that he couldn't get it unless he bought lunch. I know my point might seem trivial to others, a waste of time to others, and biased since it is my grandson, but I want, a, I want, a, I want an answer so I can go back and tell him because I told him I was coming here. But here is my point again, when we can spend in excess of a million dollars to defend people for something and pay their salaries for nearly two years as well as pay others to do their job, we should darn well be able to give a child a mustard pack. No matter whose child or grandchild it is, whether they buy lunch or bring lunch, in one way or another, etc. It shows how far we are off base when we can do and allow this type of spending to occur, yet we cannot provide something as simple as a mustard pack to a child. To have with their lunch, and just because something is in a contract does not make it right or smart. There comes a point when throwing hundreds of thousands of dollars out is just plain not smart. And the board should start looking for an out as well as not making the same mistake twice and allowing this costly language to remain in contracts without an ending point. For the question of what I would be ticked off is my grand. The answer is heck yes, it would be any other child, it doesn't matter whether it's my grandchild or anybody in this room's grandchild or your grandchild, I would like an answer to why couldn't they give him, they wouldn't even sell him 
He had the money in his pocket, but they wouldn't even sell him a mustard pack. But yet we can throw away millions of dollars and we can't give a child a mustard pack. Does anybody have an answer to that? Can I go back to my 11-year-old son, a grandson, and tell him? No answer. Really? Wow. Next to the podium, Mr. Miss Pat Eckstein, talking about Tanner School. Good evening. It's good to see you all tonight. We've all been taking turns during the summer <laughs> to come up and see you. Um, sometimes when a group or individuals have been involved in an issue for a long, long time and stuck on something, it sort of becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy that it will never be completed. Um, Councilman Joel Hodges from uh, Hanahan delivered personally to Mr. Hayes Hanahan's contract offer. Been waiting a long time between the superintendent search and then the research and Dr. Turner coming on board. Um, and what Joel told me was that um, what he told Mr. Hayes was the contract that was presented was not written in concrete. Please come back with some ideas. Um, somewhere in between there and all the other contracts between the city and the school district, there's a solution. There's an answer. We have since learned that another city council member has been reaching out to, to some of the members of the board with some thoughts of his own. And he has shared them with us as well. Um, and it forced us with Joel's comments to go back and take a look at things, give it a fresh look, see what else we can find. That's what we're in the process of doing right now. Whoever thought there might be another idea. So Dr. Turner, you said to us at the July 13th meeting that you would welcome representatives of the Citizens Committee if we could assist you with, this, with the school district and the city in getting together. So we offer that, that, that uh, branch again. No matter the outcome of your vote tonight on the revised Hanahan purchase contract to vote yes, to vote no, or to table it to go back, I think the mayor even said in her cover letter to please get back to her. Um, we would ask you to please go back and meet with the city again and we would like to be in, be involved with that um we were so excited and you know in hanahan how excited everybody was to vote yes not only for our schools in hanahan but for the other the other schools the the cane hoy the philip simmons high school so all the kids who've been on the bus from cane hoy can now go to their own school after what i think 11 years they've been in hanahan so um Let's not make this a self-fulfilling prophecy. Um, let's see if, if we, can get, we can get this done. And we stand ready to, to sit down with the, the city and, and, and the school district and uh, try to, maybe we're the, the middle person that we didn't want to be and maybe, maybe we can do it. So thank you all very much. Thank you. All right, moving on to agenda item number eight, financial services. Looking at uh, item for information, the fiscal year 215-216 teacher salary schedule update. Mr. Thomas. I'm in charge of finance, not the technology. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, I shouldn't say that, I guess. <laughs> Well, y'all remember the uh, <laughs> slides that we gave you during the budget process when we were trying to implement the new teacher salary schedule in different colors. Green was um, Berkeley's is um, less than Dorchester, but not within those ranges. Yellow was Dorchester was greater than Berkeley by less than a thousand. Orange was Dorchester is greater than Berkeley between one thousand and two thousand, and red was two thousand or more. So. Um, with the implementation of the new salary schedule, I'll have Penny send you the actual, or she should have maybe a copy of the PowerPoint, but we actually uh, achieved our goal in um, meeting, uh, or move, moving in the right direction with those, um, with those uh, grades. So for example, on the 14-15 with the Berkeley Dorchester, they were all red up till about uh, year 11. We, we achieved yellow and also some green in mm -hmm. that uh, grouping. Also with um, Dorchester, basically the same uh, progress. So um, if we were able to have done the um, four, four million or the six million, we would definitely made some progress, but they also, Dorchester and uh, Ber uh, Charleston, increased their salary schedules as well. So it was kind of a moving target to get there. So um, anyway, sorry for the technology problems, but um, just wanted to share that with you. So you should have a copy of this in your file. We have the PowerPoint as well, Mr. Thomas, from earlier meetings. Do we have any questions? Then moving on to agenda item number nine, human resources. Item for update, the hiring update. Dr. Levine. Good evening, Board Chair Hayes, Dr. Turner, and board members. You also have this information in your packet entitled Hiring for Success, and you see there are some beautiful pictures within your packet too, especially if you look at the second page of it there. That was on our website for our first day, and we call it Hiring Success because of the number of individuals that we have hired for this year. And we are, are of course, still working on some things. But if you look at the second page of your handout, you will see that we have 311 new hires for certified and professional staff. And I cannot take the credit for that. I have to give the credit to our, our district staff members who have been actively recruiting for us and also members of the HR department. I have uh, Julie Rogers here tonight with me. She is our director for HR. You all know Shelly Green. They all do a wonderful job making the offers and it takes a whole lot to do that. So you see the numbers in your packet there. If you turn over to the next page, you will see what we have left. We're showing 12 vacancies now, but because we've gotten some new allocations into, we are, that number is just moving constantly. So just know that we are still working on it and we are planning on filling every single position that we have there. Also, if you turn over to the next page, you will see our support staff hiring. And our total number there for support staff, 131 hires for the summer. So that is a great deal also. We have Holly Landry who does that and works on that part for us. If you turn over to the next page, you will see bus drivers at the top. We are hiring, hiring, hiring constantly. So I didn't want to give you a number for that one to mislead you in any way because it's open the entire year. So the other numbers that you see there, those are changing daily as well. We have a new hire orientation tomorrow. So these numbers will actually even go down for tomorrow as you do that. Now, do you have any questions for me that I can answer for you? Mr. Mr. <coughs> Excuse me. Mr. Chairman, I would note that uh, the HR department, our human resource department, has done an incredible job working hard this summer as we uh, tried to fill as many vacancies as we could as quickly as we could so that we would have people in the classrooms 
ready to go. And it was, a, uh, I think, our opening was a resounding success with regard, even all those new 300 were able to get it and to have instruction the first day. Thank you for your hard work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Dr. Turner may I also add, if you look at some of the pictures in there, you might see some familiar faces because some of them actually graduated from Berkeley County Schools and are now back teaching and working in the district. So that's phenomenal. And some of them actually went through our, um, our program to get our, our young people involved in teaching. So, so it's a wonderful thing. So we're glad to do that. Very happy. I have one quick question. The 70 allocations from the budget, are those spread throughout all um, elementary, middle, high, or is there one particular area where those new allocations show in that 300 number? Does that well, question make sense? There's, I understand, yes ma'am. <laughs> They're spread throughout to a degree, but if you look at the numbers there, you see that elementary is where we hired the most as far as certified staff, which makes sense based on the number of elementary schools that we have in the district. So to me, more lean, and I don't have an exact number. I wish I could quote you something specific for that right now. But just based on what I've seen, more of them have been in that area where we've had that growth. Just for the benefit of the audience um, who can't see this, we have what Dr. Levine was just talking about. We have elementary, our new hires this year um, that we have on our slides, uh, 127 for elementary, 72 for middle school, and um, 73 for high school. And these are classroom teachers, correct? Yes, ma'am. They're okay. classroom teachers. And let me look back at that slide yeah. because for some of them, we also have other staff involved, which would be, let's say, for example, your media specialist, they would be included in this number, in this particular number as well, as professional staff. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any okay. other questions? All right. Thank you, Dr. Levine. Thank you as well. Moving on to agenda item 10, instruction and accountability. Item for information, Philip Simmons STEAM School. Dr. Gorman. Can we pause the meeting till we get the projector working? <laughs> Please ignore the man in the middle of the room. He wrote his own to work. So, Mr. Chair, members of the board, um, Dr. Turner, ladies and gentlemen, it won't go. So, just so everybody in the you know the audience like me, you're thinking, surely it's frozen, or you can just switch the. We've done everything. It's, uh, it, it won't even turn off or on. And there was a really cool video in this presentation. I, I'm going to make a suggestion: is that you make some comments about what is uh, as the uh, timeline for the development of the Steam yes, School, sir. and we'll invite you back at a later time if we can to give us the presentation that you have with regard to the uh, graphics and other things I think that would illustrate your comments even more but give us a short summary of what uh, what we are looking at in terms of development so just just run through the timeline and, and come back and do this presentation yes, later please we've got the nice PTA folks here you know <laughs> that's why you came tonight right <laughs> it is isn't it I, they have a meeting this Thursday you could present at I can do that. Um, so, okay, so real quick, we are, um, since January or so, we've been um, researching models and um, looking what the State Department has pushed out. You can actually go to the State Department of Education and they've got a whole, you know, sort of rubric on implementing a STEAM school. Um, we're going to look at a couple of school districts in the, um, in the state of South Carolina, just sort of to give some parameters, if you will, for the, the big committee that will come in and, and look at this. So we hope to visit some sites in September, October, as we transition into November, uh, develop common vision and goals with a, a greater committee. And some of that will take place with the hiring of the, the principals um, for the school. And you know, there's sort of a handoff between when that principal takes over and, and us as a guiding team sort of creating that vision. So in other words, we don't want to do too much we don't want to drive it too much yet, bring enough material to the table so that folks have enough information to make good decisions and information and, and, that, kind of, and that kind of thing. Um, but by December, have a good strategic plan in place or pretty close to it, again, depending on when those principles are hired and put in place. And definitely by January, have a really good plan um, and then bring on uh, sort of the, some of the community stakeholders. 
just real quick about the committee uh, we've got a couple of folks um, at the cabinet level mr jackson uh, mr davis dr gelman um, we've also got two k-8 principals marty french uh, Anthony Dixon that are involved. We got um, some of our content coordinators, Gina Boyd, uh, Melissa Negreros, Jennifer Thorsten, our, our math content coordinators. We've also got Charla Groves with technology. Um, we've got some folks from my office, um, Priscilla Calcutt, Tana Lee with career and technology. So we've got kind of the whole gamut between school level, content coordinators, you know, all with the science, technology, engineering, arts, math, um, that kind of stuff involved on the front end to kind of do the research and then bring it to the table for the, the bigger group and we bring the parents and business folks in. Is that it for tonight in a nutshell? Is that good? And then I'll, I'll come back with the, um, the fancy stuff when our projector's working again, I guess. Thank you. New or a new projector, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gorman. Moving on to agenda item number 11, the superintendent's report, the item for information, the, uh, the preliminary enrollment data for this school year on day five. And for a item for action is a revised purchase and sale agreement for Hanahan property. Dr. Chairman Hayes, members of the board, I believe you have a, uh, a line graph in your folders that you might want to take a look at. I think we tried to put in a day seven uh, revised one. We had a day five at first. But here's where we are with enrollment on day seven. We are now at 32,328 students in K through 12. That does not include four-year-olds or Head Start, which is another thousand students. So in actuality, we're housing in, in our schools right now about 33,328 students. Uh, that's an increase uh, up on, and we're only at day seven, so we're gonna add more students as we move along. Not as great of increase from day to day as we saw during the first week, but we still will add more students, uh, some especially right after uh, Labor Day. But right now we stand at a, a growth uh, in this area of 930 students uh, in K-12 uh, over last year. Uh, that's pretty close to what we were predicting for very rapid growth would happen to us as we move forward with all of the opening of new, new subdivisions, et cetera, uh, over the next uh, 20 years. So if you can envision this kind of accommodation of a thousand students every year, for year after year after year, you'll begin to see what kind of challenge that's going to bring to us. Uh, also, uh, uh, interestingly enough, we are 440 stu uh, excuse me, 442 students above projection right now. And you may recall at the last meeting, I didn't think we were going to be in this necessarily in this position. I asked the board to consider giving me four additional FTE if needed. Well, not only was that needed, but I knew that we needed to move ahead as quickly as we, uh, as we could. And so uh, we have authorized new hires to cover these additional 442 students and give you the total number of FTE. We had to add a lot of kindergarten teachers, believe it or not, second grade, fifth grade, um, and uh, also uh, some new teachers in the middle school, a PE teacher, and also at Cane Bay High School, a total of uh, two teachers and moving another teacher in there. Most of this uh, uh, higher than expected growth has been occurring in the Cane Bay area. And um, so I just wanted to mention that it also dovetails into the uh, kind of information we have provided the board previously. So we have a, a, a net of uh, seven new teachers in elementary and three assistants, uh, a total of 12.4 teachers and three assistants we've had to add in order to cover this kind of situation. And we have already placed some, hired and placed some of those teachers in the classroom during this first week so that students' instruction would not be totally interrupted or to have such huge class sizes in some situation. We believe most of the, most, uh, most of the uh, uh, difficulty has already been addressed with this so that students can settle down if they are in a situation that was overcrowded and begin to have uh, instruction with the person they're going to be with for the rest of the year. So uh, we went ahead with the notion that uh, 
we needed to go ahead and get these people in place as quickly as possible. So we are, we are uh, with this increase in enrollment, going to obviously have increases in our state funding, and so we feel comfortable in uh, having hired extra people and, and not wait so students, I always call it, especially in kindergarten, you don't want the students to get imprinted on the wrong teachers. <laughs> it uh, causes difficulties down the road. So uh, that's what's happened uh, with regard to enrollment. Uh, it has just uh, been, uh, uh, I, I, th I was uh, very surprised at the, how robust the enrollment was and how quickly these numbers climbed. It's, uh, it's something. So I'm glad we have this, right now have the space and everything to do what we need to do. Thank you. Uh, the next item is an action item, as the chair mentioned, uh, uh, the revised purchase and sale agreement um, for the new uh, proposed school in the Tanner Plantation area. And uh, as you know, uh, by this time you have in your packet or uh, in electronic media, uh, the city of Hanahan on August the 12th hand delivered a new uh, uh, contract or uh, property uh, and sale agreement for consideration by the school district uh, and hand delivered it to our chairman. Uh, we've also received copies a few days ago for the rest of the board, I believe, and, uh, and my staff. Uh, it, almost immediately after the chairman brought uh, the agreement to us, we had it uh, analyzed by um, legal staff as well as uh, Mr. Dion Jackson, who is uh, gone through the agreement and he's ready now I think to give you a short rundown on the differences between this agreement and the last agreement you actually voted for and approved what we sometimes call the 3A agreement that you voted for five to three that last March and so he's going to go through the differences that we see with regard to this proposed agreement and that agreement back in last March Mr. Jackson. Yes, sir. Good evening, Chairman Hayes, Dr. Turner, members of the board. Uh, after receiving the most recent purchase agreement, uh, we did consult with our attorneys, George Bullwinkle and Bobby Mazingo of Nex and Pruitt, uh, to review and compare the purchase agreement with 3A. I um, have a brief synopsis, and, and I believe you have some of this in a correspondence that was sent from Dr. Turner. Um, according to the purchase agreement, the property has been rezoned from conservation preservation to residential single family. It appears the city had the property appraised and established the fair market value at $500,000 at the uh, conservation preservation price uh, or, or um, category and 1.25 million if zoned residential, uh, it's zoned as a residential, residential property. The purchase price on the agreement has been set at $500,000. The district has not received or requested any appraisal information on the property. The term of the deed restrictions uh, on the new property has been reduced from 50 years to 25 years. Um, according to the proposed agreement, the city may seek specific performance injunctive relief and remedies, but, no, uh, but not monetary damages and no reverting clause. Um, that's not in the contract. The sentence that reads, these new school property restrictive covenants shall not be valid or enforceable if and to the extent that they are prohibited by the state or federal laws and regulations or are contrary to the then written policy of the Berkeley County School District. That sentence has been removed. Um, the city is still amenable to donating the six acres of federal property to Berkeley County School District, but the land has not yet been acquired. M uh, Mr. Jackson, can I interrupt you for a minute? So yes, you said they struck the sentence. Uh, what section was that sentence in? Do you remember? Um, can you do that for me one more time? Yes, ma'am. The sentence that reads, these new school property restrictive covenants shall not be valid or enforceable if and to the extent they are prohibited by state or federal laws and regulations or are contrary to the then current written policy of Berkeley County School District. That was stricken, that was removed. It's in the, I can't remember the number section, but it's in the section that refers to the restrictive covenants on the new property. It should be, it's highlighted in. in the the, electronic copy. Yes. Yeah. 
As I said, the city is still amenable to donating the six acres of the federal property once it is conveyed. It has not yet been conveyed. In an email received uh, from a member of the Citizens Committee, um, it indicates that the survey still needs to be conducted. Uh, the endorsement from the Army Corps of Engineers still needs to occur, uh, needs to have an appraisal on the property and negotiated sale price. Um, and according to the email, uh, they anticipate the earliest that this will be done is the summer of 2016. Also included uh, or added back to the, per excuse me, the purchase agreement is the restrictive covenants on re existing schools, um, including Hanahan Elementary, Hanahan Middle School, and Hanahan High School. Uh, they're all included in the most recent purchase agreement received from the city uh, with the term reduced from 50 years to 25 years. Thank you, Mr. Jackson. Um, <coughs> We were very excited at first to receive this uh, proposed uh, agreement, purchase agreement, because we were hopeful that the proposed uh, covenants or deed restrictions that appeared in the prior versions uh, with regard to Hanahan Elementary, Hanahan Middle, and Hanahan High School had been removed. As a matter of fact, I believe that's the, in my view, though there may be some consideration with regard to purchase price and some other things that people might pick at, but uh, I think uh, the real sticking point here in terms of the district administration is the insistence on these uh, restrictions, deed restrictions for the existing schools. So therefore, Mr. Chairman, the administration recommends that the board respectfully decline to purchase the city of Hanahan property under the proposed purchase and sale agreement dated August 12, 2015, and further, that the board urge the city of Hanahan to submit a revised purchase and sale agreement without deed restrictions being placed upon Hanahan Elementary, Hanahan Middle, and Hanahan High Schools as soon as is practical for the board's consideration. Mr. Chairman. I have a motion if you're willing to accept it. Okay. I move that the Berkeley County School District decline the purchase and sale agreement presented by the City of Hanahan to Chairman Hayes on August 12, 2015. And further, I request that the City of Hanahan present a revised agreement that does not contain deed restrictions on Hanahan Elementary, Hanahan Middle, and Hanahan High School as soon as is practicable. I'll second the motion. Thank you. All right, we have a motion that the Berkeley County School District decline the purchase and sale agreement presented by the City of Hanahan to Chairman Hayes on August the 12th, 2015, and further request that the City of Hanahan present a revised agreement that does not contain deed restrictions on El Hanahan Elementary, Hanahan Middle, and Hanahan High Schools as soon as is practicable. And it has been seconded. Do I have any discussion? Mr. Chair, I would also like to point out that we put the, or we wanted the sentence that allowed us to follow our board policy in the contract um, because one of our policies is if a teacher teaches at that school, their children are allowed to go to that school. And we don't want a contract that prohibits our employees, teachers, staff, for being able to have their children at their school um, where they're working. And so anything that keeps us from being able to abide by that policy is a deal breaker for me as well. Here, here. Thank you, Ms. Walford. So does that need to be a friendly amendment? Yes. I'll yes. Support. Okay. Yes, I'll accept it. Thank you, Ms. Walford. It's not worth much, but I'm going to put you in my last will and testament. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Who you. said we aren't friends? That's right. Uh, one quick comment, Mr. Chair. This does leave the door open. You got it. Thank you. First. Uh, yeah, that, and the reason I second this motion, Dr. Murray and I don't always agree on this contract, <laughs> but uh, tonight we do agree because we want to move forward. We want to continue the negotiations and get a school built for our children. I think Absolutely. we're a lot closer than we than a lot of people perceive we are. So I'm the hopeful motion. that we can get a deal. Any other discussion? Well, we first must deal with the amendment. 
that I've accepted it. Uh, how Bible. did that read? No. How did you read that original? Did you read the sentence that had been deleted, Mr. Jackson? If you would. Yeah. And I would want to add that to the motion. I can repeat the motion and then we can add Mr. Jackson's sentence. If you would let me go first, Mr. Jackson. I move that Berkeley County School District decline the purchase and sale agreement presented by the city of Hanahan to Chairman Hayes on August 12th, 2015, and further request that the city of Hanahan present a revised agreement that does not contain deed restrictions on Hanahan Elementary, Hanahan Middle, and Hanahan High School as soon as is practicable. And then I would like to add the sentence, Mr. Jackson, if I could rely on you. Yes, sir. These new school property restrictive covenants shall not be valid or enforceable if, parentheses, and to the extent, close parentheses, they are prohibited by state or federal laws or regulations or are contrary to the then written policy of the Berkeley County School District. Thank you. Mr. Chairman and colleagues, will you accept this motion with the friendly amendment as stated by Mr. Jackson. Okay. <clears throat> motion needs to be seconded again, right? Does it need to be seconded again, Mr. Mack, uh, Mr. McQuillan? I've got a I'll, I'll second it again. <laughs> Thank you, Matt. All right, the motion has been made and it has been seconded. Discussion has been made, so therefore we shall go ahead and vote on this. All those in favor of this motion, Please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Then the motion carries. 8-0. Thank you. Thank you as well, Dr. Turner, for your continued work with the Citizens Committee. Thank, Thank you. you so much. As well as the city. Thank you so much. Okay. And at this time, we move to agenda item number yeah, 12, which is executive session. I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session. So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. Any discussion? We need to state the purposes. Um, oh, purposes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Purposes. Mr. Chair, I move I moved that we go into executive session for purpose of 12 student attendance appeals, discussion of a pending employment matter, receipt of legal advice for an employment contractual matter, receipt of legal advice for employment student matter. Second. Is there any discussion? Then at this time, the motion has been made to go into executive session to A, student, uh, to discuss student attendance appeals, B, discussion of pending employment matters, C, receipt of legal advice, employment contractual matters, and D, receipt, legal advice, employment student matter. All of those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Then we are in executive session. Okay, do I have a motion to return to general session? So moved, Mr. Chair. Second. We have a motion and a second to return to the regular session. Is there uh, any discussion? Then all of those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. And the motion carries. We're back in regular session. The action required from the executive session, the first thing we're, uh, we, I want to announce that we have called a special meeting for next Monday evening at 6.30 to continue some deliberations. Moving on to the student attendance appeals. For student number one, do we have a motion? Mr. Chair, I move that we accept the attendance appeal of student number one. Second. second. Oh, I'll give it to Mr. McClellan. All right, we have a motion and a second to accept the attendance appeal for student number one. All of those in favor of this motion, please respond with saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Then that motion carries 7-0. Moving on to student number two, do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, in the matter of student number two, I move to deny the attendance appeal. I second. 
We have a motion and a second to deny the attendance appeal for student number two. All of those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. That motion carries 6-1. Moving on to student number three. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chair, on the matter of student number three, I move that we deny the appeal. Second. We have a motion and a second to deny the attendance appeal for student number three. All of those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. aye. That motion carries 5-2. Moving on to student number four. Mr. Chairman, in the matter of student number four, I move to deny the appeal. I'll second. There is a motion to deny the attendance appeal for student number four. All of those in favor of this motion, please respond with saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries 7-0. Moving on to student number five. Mr. Chair, I move that we accept the attendance appeal for student number five. I second. We have a motion to accept the attendance appeal for student number five. All of those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries 7-0. Moving on to student number six. Chair, I move that we deny the appeal of student number six. Second. We have a motion to deny the attendance appeal for student number six. All of those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. 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 We Mr. Have Chairman, was that just for uh, the secretary, was that a 4-3 vote? That was a 3-4 vote. 3-4. Three, 3-4. Four. Three, four. Three, four. Then we need to restate the motion. Mr. Chair, in the matter of student number six, I move that we approve the appeal. All of those in favor of the Would motion you to- Did you have a second, Mr. Second. Chairman? Okay, I'm sorry. Lee Barnes. We have a motion and a second then yes. to approve a attendance appeal for student number six. All of those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. That carries six. One. Student number seven. Mr. Chairman, in the matter of student number seven, I move to deny the appeal. I second. All right, we have a motion to deny the attendance appeal for student number seven. All of those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. aye. Is that a four three or a four three? Four three. We'll take students numbers eight and nine together. Mr. Chairman, in the matters of students number eight and nine, I move to accept the appeal. Second. We have a motion to accept the attendance appeals for students numbers eight and nine. All of those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries 7-0. Students 10 and 11 will be kept uh, combined together. Do I have a motion? Mr. Chairman, in the matters, uh, excuse me, the matter of students number 10 and 11, I move to deny the appeal. I'll second. We have a motion to deny the attendance appeals for students numbers 10 and 11. All of those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. That motion carries 7-0. And for student number 12. Mr. Chair, I move that we deny the appeal of student number 12. Second. We have a motion and a second to deny the attendance appeal for student number 12. All of those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Aye. 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 So four, four three. three. That motion carries. Mr. Chairman, I move that we adjourn. Second. We have a motion to adjourn for tonight. It's been seconded. Any discussion? And 
All of those in favor of this motion, please respond by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Then we are adjourned.